HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. I don't know if you guys know this, but Dylan is a Dior man. I like them Dior sneakers. Yeah, I, I rock with it. I rock with it. He got it off just in time before winter hit, too. <laughs> That's just that. Well, he's Canadian, too, so he can handle it. Oh, yeah, he's used to it. Uh, I'm walking yeah. around in, in, like, a tank top today, and everyone's like, oh, my God, you're so cold. <laughs> Dylan, I feel you. Right. Join me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, along with the three guys who know everything about sneaker culture, Jerry, Adam, and Sherm, as we discuss shoes, clothes, and trends with the Memphis Grizzlies and across the NBA. Every Tuesday, live at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media and YouTube. Pentatonix is back, just in time for the holidays. Pentatonix, a Christmas spectacular, with special guest Girl Named Tom. Saturday, December 10th, FedEx Forum. Take your family to the best Christmas show of the year. Grammy-winning favorites, Pentatonix. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. The new album, Holidays Around the World, out October 28th. Let's get to the jersey thing first. The Grizzly City jersey, it looks awesome. It does. It's got like the diamond look. And I believe Sports Illustrated ranked it number one. Every time we do a black jersey, I like it. You know what I mean? All the all, all the versions of the black jerseys that we've had. And they're selling out like crazy. Jenna just said she walked down there to the team store. She said there was like 50 people in oh, there. Oh, slammed. The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on GrindCityMedia.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome into Rise and Grind. Jessica Benson and CJ Hurt with you here to kick off a Tuesday in Memphis. A big Tuesday. USA playing Iran. World Cup action this afternoon. Big storms supposedly coming through Memphis. Don't be fooled by the blue skies and sunshine this morning. I'm told we have a moderate threat of severe weather. What does severe weather look like? Know. Are we talking thunderstorms, rain. snow? The what are we talking word. about? Tea. Tornado. Oh, really? Oh no. Potential. Take it seriously. Always, always take that kind of stuff a little extra seriously. It looks beautiful right now. It was like nearing 60 degrees but on that, my walk that's, that's how they fool that's you. That's what it's supposed to but do. But they get you. It starts off beautiful, but think about it. It's not supposed to be 60 degrees in basically December. No. Like, yo, something's coming. Something's coming. It's like, it's kind of how my morning has gone. Like, you look outside and you're like, ooh, the sun is shining, but something's coming. Just like I was like, ooh, what a beautiful day. I had a great night last night. We'll talk about it. But. Then I stepped in the elevator on my way down to work, and a dog had pooped in the elevator. What a way to start the morning! Do you know what kind of a Do you know what kind of assault that is on your nostrils? Like you're just living your life, you got your AirPods in, you're figuring out what you're going to do with the day, excited for a full Tuesday ahead, and then what's that? Oh, oh no! You looked out. They they tried to clean it up. But the what, what, what do you there. mean they tried to clean like it, it was, up? It was white. Because, well, you can't just wipe. You, that's half ass. Yes. You know that um, dog turds, doggy dookie has a mm -hmm. terrible smell. So if you're just picking it up with paper towels, if you're just wiping it out of the elevator, but leaving the remnants of that foul odor in there, you didn't try to clean it. You need to go in the, your, your apartment, yes. get your pine saw, get your bleach, get your Febreze, Mix that together in the bleach and the pine saw, scrub that part of the floor down, and, and then, then spray your Febreze. And then you need to stand in the door so you can let that scent air out. That is the issue with the doggy dookie. If it's dookieing in a place where there are no doors, what? It's a doggy dookie. That's what it is. If it's in a place where you can't let it air out, that funk just sits there. And there's no worse place that I can think of for a doggy dookie to be had than the elevator. Yeah, no, there's absolutely none. I, when we've watched and been 
dog sitting and had dogs, it's one of my biggest fears is, I don't know this dog, this dog isn't mine, I'm babysitting it for a couple hours a day, whatever. What if I don't know his habits and he just poops in the elevator? What do you do? Because the door is closed, you have to take the dog outside. And like you said, the, the steps of getting back to your apartment, getting the cleaning materials, coming back, we have two elevators, so you have to make sure you get the right elevator. All that time just lets it sit in there and then some poor person like me, literally a man got in the elevator on one of the lower floors on our way down and he stepped in and you saw immediately, nostrils flared. And I needed to make sure that he knew it wasn't me. <laughs> this was not my doing, so I go, really s smells like a dog went to the bathroom in here as awkwardly as humanly possible. And on the way out, he goes, he, I hope your day gets better. He probably thinks it's you. He probably absolutely he probably thinks, thinks it's you. But like, oh my gosh. If you happen to be watching, sir, from my building, I swear it wasn't me. I saw two dogs on my way out. I was like, was it you? Might have been them. You can't. So in your story and you're telling of the tale, if the, the doggy dookie's on the elevator, mm -hmm. you still take the dog out and then you come back and deal with the doggy dookie. And that's not that's not right. Well, You've got to immediately get back upstairs. But what if there's more? If there's it's better for and then what if it's in the hall? What, oh, that's a good question. Like what if he poops in the elevator and then pees in the hall and then you have two messes and you still have to get him outside. Well, you don't want to just let the doggy dookie sit there in the elevator. You're right, you don't. You can't do that. All that to say. Been a tough morning? It's been a bit of a tough morning. It's 8.07 a.m. Jeff Saturday still has two timeouts, in case this, this anyone is, was wondering. This is where head coaching matters. This no, is, this is, is ha <laughs> Yes. How many times have we seen coaches bungle this in the NFL just this season? And this then I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask you if you think they're good coaches. Hackett, is he a good coach? Uh, going to go with a no. Uh, uh, Campbell up in Detroit, mm, good coach? No. I know. No. No, he's not. You're not going to let me say you. anything no. but no. And, and Saturday, the interim coach who's coming from high school. Gets a no. win week one. Almost at least hangs with the Eagles. And then you're watching this man. He's not even, he's not even animated on the sidelines at this point as the Colts are driving down. And listen, I tuned into this game right at the end because I made an executive decision that I was not going to watch Steelers Colts all Monday night, which was kind of dumb. If there'd been a Manning cast, I would have loved to have watched Peyton Manning at the end of that game because he frequently yells. We saw him yell at Nathaniel Hackett to call a timeout earlier this year. Would he have yelled at his buddy Jeff Saturday in the same way? I think he would have been moved to do so. We tuned into the game. Perfect timing to watch that. That Matt Ryan run, it was only 14 yards. It felt like 40. It felt like that man ran the entire length of the field. But he gets there, and still no timeout, and you're all calling timeouts. But the whole reason why we just tuned in at the end, CJ, was because we decided to watch a movie last night. Oh. You want to know what we watched? What? And I know it's not Theater Thursdays, but I'm calling an audible. Because we watch Spirited, and I want everyone, I want everyone to watch Spirited. It's the Will Ferrell, Ryan Reynolds musical comedy on Apple Plus. And I just said musical comedy, and half of you were like, I'm not going to watch a musical comedy. And I have to admit, when Will Ferrell was singing his second song in like 20 minutes, I too questioned for a moment the decision to watch a musical comedy. But it put me in the most joyous of moods. It was a new take on A Christmas Carol. Very rarely are there new Christmas movies that I think will stick with me in a place where maybe like someday I'll have my children watch these Christmas movies. I can think of Jingle Jangle, which was one, was two years good. ago. That was good. This sits in that same space. Go watch Spirited. Jingle Jangle, Klaus, will will have the full right. Spirited review during theater Thursday. If I had to wait a full week to talk about Black Panther, you gotta wait a full week to talk about uh, whatever this movie is. Okay, fine. Instead, I'll talk about three straight plays after the two minute warning where the Colts were tackled in bounds and Jeff Saturday Time is out. just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. Not Time even out. animated. Time out. Time out. I, honestly, at that point, Matt Ryan, you've been playing for 855 years. Call a timeout. Take it upon yourself. I know you're not going to, but it led me to have so many questions about who. Who is in charge of Jeff Saturday? I know he's the head coach, but who's the person who taps him on the shoulder and says, call a timeout? Who's the person who gets Nobody. in his ear? Nobody. Nobody. Exactly. And that's the problem. I mean, if he, if he, the owner put this person who is not qualified to do this job in charge, none of us can tell you what to do because you've got the owner's ear. The, so unless Ursay came down and, and smacked Jeff Saturday on, on the back and said, hey, buddy, can you call a timeout here with a minute 30 left so we can save some of this time? Nobody else can, can do that. This is bad, bad. That game was good for me because Najee Harris came through. I know, through. I thought He came you. through, baby. Michael Pittman as well. Yeah, baby. All we care about. I'm, I'm, I'm off the snide, baby. <laughs> Najee Harris, I he got, knows his status moving forward, but he got CJ his first fantasy football I got, win I'm 1-11 in the league. I'm not going winless, folks.
Take that. I don't think I've ever been in a league with a 1-11 well, record. Well, now you have. But now I have. Now I'll always be able to tell people when they're like, man, my fantasy football season sucks. I'll be like, once upon a time, I was in a league created and yeah. commissioned yeah. by a one and only yeah. Conrad Hurt Jr. 1-11. That's so sad. And I made, I've made trades in this league to try and get better. Nothing works. It's not like you've just sat and not no. used the waiver wires, not made trades. You've tried. You've given it your best effort. Yes. Much like the two teams that were on the football field last night. I'll take the Colts out of it. I will say for the Steelers, looking at the highlights from the game and watching the postgame show, very impressed with who Kenny Pickett is becoming. Like, I think, you know, so often seasons get tossed away as – Oh, it was a waste of a year. I don't think you can look at it that way when it comes to the Steelers because Kenny Pickett is showing you promise. Like, that's more than you can say. Look at all of the turmoil and mess that's going on with Zach Wilson and the Jets. And he's younger than Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett's going to be 25 years old next season, and he looks good. And call back to way earlier in the year, George Pickens. Been stashing him on my bench for eons it feels like at this point and yeah he still has some drops where you're like eh. but then he comes up with big plays afterwards you're seeing it not affect him mentally as much he's still willing to go out there and he makes just some ridiculous grabs I think they're going to be good I mean it's a Mike Tomlin coach team like that's where you want to be in a stable situation even in a period of instability and you're seeing that in the growth of Kenny Pickett and what you don't have to worry about with Mike Tomlin and these Steelers is hey are they going to give up on the season three and seven on the year they could fold it in and start trying to tank for whatever player that they need. No, they're going to go out there and they're going to compete at a high level game in, game out. And they're going to get better as the season goes along. And that's what we're seeing right now. It's hard when you have a rookie quarterback to get wins if everybody else around them is not studly, right? If you don't have two or three of the best players on the field, it's hard for that rookie quarterback because the game is coming at you just so fast, especially when, correct me if I'm wrong, but Kenny Pickett didn't start the first three, four games of the season. So now he's working himself. He's figuring out some of these NFL defenses, figuring out the speed of the game. And so now he is a touch better. You can see the improvements from this game and his first game out there. And that's a testament to the coaching job and the development job that the Steelers organization does as a whole. They are four and seven right now, four and seven, five and seven. Uh, I think four and seven. And so Mike Tomlin has yet to have a losing record as a head coach. He's got, he can lose one more game. That's it. Do the, do the Steelers end the season with a winning record? Because you can't go eight and eight anymore. He'd have to go nine and seven. He can't lose any more games and keep that winning record. They play the Falcons next week. Okay. I win. They play the Ravens the following week. Which Who, at this knows? Point, who, who knows? Who knows? What, what the hell are the Ravens doing? They play the Panthers. Win. Play the Raiders. Most likely a win. Win. Play the Ravens again. Oh, they got the Ravens twice. Ravens twice is tough. Yeah, they're probably not going to give them end. one of those, and then they end the season with the Browns. Okay. Well, it, it's his, doable. It's doable. It's not. It's not. Here it is. It's not like the Chiefs are sitting there on the schedule at some point. <laughs> like, you, you've got an option at this point with that the rest of the way. All right, let's talk about the big news in college football yesterday. Uh, we alluded that it might happen on yesterday's show. It officially it became official yesterday as Hugh Freeze is the new head coach at Auburn. Hugh Freeze reportedly signing a six-year deal with Auburn for $6.5 million dollars a year. This comes after he has spent his last four seasons coaching at Liberty, where he had a winning record every step of the way. He replaces interim head coach Cadillac Williams, who went two and two as interim. Auburn still owes Brian Harson $15 million in his buyout. They're still paying Gus Malzahn from his $21 million buyout that he had a few years ago. It's a lot of money going to coaches who are not coaching Auburn, but now they have picked their guy in Hugh Freeze. CJ, what? I am aware that Hugh Freeze has proven that he can coach in the SEC. I am aware that Hugh Freeze beat Nick Saban not once, but twice. And he did it two years in a row. And that's impressive. He went 39 and 25 at Ole Miss. I am aware that he has paid the perceived price of his transgressions while at the University of Mississippi, in which he used university paid cell phones to call escort services. He has done his time at Liberty. I'm aware that that is all that matters when it comes to how a lot of people perceive football and coaching, and he's, he can coach. He sure can coach. 
And according to him, he has apologized, he has made his amends, he has done what he has needed to do. I hate this. <laughs> I really do. I really, really do. As, as a woman, and, and you can make it a woman thing, just make it a people thing. You can say this is all in his past and people deserve second chances, and I am all for that always. But there are continued examples of Hugh Freeze not learning from said past, and at the very least, he sent a direct message back in July. There was a sexual assault allegation situation at Liberty involving two football players, and Hugh Freeze went out of his way to direct message on Twitter one of the people accusing the football players of sexual assault. Sent her a message, just making sure that she knew the character of his football player. Hugh Freeze, one, maybe he just shouldn't DM women period at this point and it looks like Auburn is trying to take the necessary steps because stop me if you've ever seen this in a contract before Hugh Freeze has agreed to give up control of all his social media channels this is according to multiple sources and this was an SI article that came out yesterday but he is contractually obligated to stay off social media and they had to hire an OS firm before he even started is that is that a good idea like does that show that this coach is who you want to be leading young men. And again, I get it, he wins. He can win, he is a proven coach who can win in the SEC and at Auburn, all that matters is that you go out there and in the Iron Bowl, you beat Alabama. And Hugh Freeze has shown that he can do that. But between that instance at Liberty, between various reports of anonymous allegations from his time, even back here in Memphis when he was the girls basketball coach at Briarcrest High School, there are allegations of paddling, of making girls change their shirts in his office, of making girls change their skirts because they were too short. When there's a pattern, it just feels gross. And now he's going to be a head football coach in the SEC again while he was at Liberty. And honestly, could have just stayed at Liberty? Could have. But Hugh Freeze wants to be bigger than Liberty. Hugh Freeze believes he is bigger than Liberty. And Auburn has now given him the chance to show that he is. I, I get that. But Hugh Freeze got old Miss to a peach bowl and a sugar bowl in back to back years. Sure none did. of that matters. Nobody, exactly. None of that matters. We want to be good people until it becomes a touch inconvenient, until it becomes a situation where I'm not getting the best thing, right? Like, I want to be a good person and I'll do everything I can to be perceived as a good person, but don't let me lose to Alabama too many times. Then I'll, I'll make a deal with the damn devil himself if it means beating Alabama and getting to a SEC championship game. And that's that's kind of what this is. Not calling Hugh Freeze the devil. The devil is a completely different thing. But it's, it's that same thought process where, hey, we know what this guy has done. We know what he has been accused of. We And I'd, I'd be willing to bet you that Auburn and, and certainly people higher up in the SEC know more about that situation about that escort situation um and they're just like yo toss it to the side that didn't get out that's not going to get out we've got a pr firm to make sure it doesn't get out if it does get out we'll work around that this guy can flat out coach liberty was really really successful in his tenure 10 and 1 one of those seasons arkansas state was really really successful in his tenure lambeth got to an naia Final Four championship, they got deep into the tournament, Lambeth, and I'm pretty sure Lambeth isn't even around anymore. Don't throw in the success he had at Ole Miss, not just um, winning games and getting to major bowls, but beating Alabama. So you throw all of that in there, it's like, yo, we, we got to go get this guy. You, we knew it was a matter of time before Hugh Freeze made his way back to a high level of coaching, back to the SEC more than likely. Every time an SEC job opened up, it was, hey, you know who they should get? They should go get Hugh. And every time they pass on Hugh, I and you, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but we sighed a collective sigh of relief. Like, whoo, Tennessee went someplace else to get a coach. Whoo, Mississippi State went someplace else. Ole Miss went someplace else to get coaches. And even, even that Ole Miss situation was like, well, if Ole Miss struggles, do you think they'd be receptive to bringing Hugh back? Hugh back? That's how desperate we are for wins in college football. None of the rest of it matters, especially if none of the rest of it gets out. That's what it is. This feels not cover up ish, but it's got some cover up sort of storylines and elements to it. Hey, he's in Auburn now. He'll go out there and, and compete. But like, what does that mean for you and your standards of morality going forward? You can't be a leader of men. And that's what we, especially with college coaches, they're leaders of men. 
Well, you can't be a, I don't want to be led by everybody. You can't be a leader of men if you're doing the things that Hugh Freeze has done in his past. Can't just sprinkle a little church on it and make it all go away, although he would very much like to which is Which is why it's so weird that he left Liberty, because that's all <laughs> they do. Choke they up. were the perfect fit. I'm sorry, God. Go, go. It's okay. Go ahead and get you a sip of water. Get that frog out. You're good. Yeah, we're good. I, it, it doesn't make sense. We talked about it before the show. Some of these coaches are culturally like they fit their university and it makes it so weird when they leave. It made it weird when Brett Bielema left Wisconsin, weird when Rich Rodriguez left West Virginia. Those are way back in the in the deep, deep distant past. But it's weird. We talked about it. It's weird that Fickle is leaving Cincinnati. It feels like he embodies so much of that university just in himself naturally. It feels like Hugh Freeze naturally embodies whatever the hell it is at Liberty. Right? So why would he leave that situation? It feels like he's jumping into the fire taking this Auburn job. It is the ego that doesn't just get college football coaches but gets a lot of people when – you can be somewhere stable, you can be somewhere comfortable, and you're constantly looking to be reassured that you are better than the place where you are at. And that feels like the Hugh Free syndrome right now. He will be at Auburn. One quick note of college basketball. Today, the ACC Big Ten Challenge starts. CJ, when did this change from the Big Ten SEC Challenge? It, it happened yesterday during the show. Okay. During the show, it happened yesterday. We had so much to talk about, we didn't get to it. But it's still in the news cycle. And, yeah, they're taking the SEC, the ACC Big Ten Challenge is changing and becoming the SEC ACC Challenge. And you could kind of see it happen. When Robbie told me yesterday during the show, I was like, oh, this is ESPN. This is their doing. This isn't because of the conferences. This isn't college basketball's doing. This is ESPN saying, hey, we've got these products here. Why would we promote somebody else's product? We know that the TV deal with ESPN is up. No Big Ten football games are on ESPN anymore, and ESPN doesn't get uh, the the basketball games as frequently either. So if you're ESPN, why would we want that product? We've got the ACC. We've got the SEC. We'll make them play, and we'll keep that money in-house. Intriguing little change-up. Well, the ACC Big Ten Challenge starts today on ESPN. So. Drink it in. Take it all in. We'll talk more college basketball. Will Coleman joins us at 840. We'll connect with him about the Memphis Tigers 2-1 and holiday weekend. Get his thoughts on how they perform down in Florida. But when we come back, we'll go through last night in the NBA, plus setting up today's big World Cup matchup for USA and Iran. Win and advance for Team USA. All that when we come back here on Rise and Grind. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay-in-your-car 10-minute oil change. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You could also dunk them in a nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Indulge in the all-new Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger with creamy steak seasoned butter and crispy bacon. Stacked on a 100% pure beef patty with two slices of melty American cheese and grilled onions. Layered between a warm bakery bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic Drive-Ins. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information, 
information on the program, visit grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. today's show will be joined by former Memphis basketball player Will Coleman as he joins us every Tuesday to break down the Memphis Tigers and what he is seeing through the college basketball season thus far but first we got to get into the action from the NBA last night and let's start with some injury news because it affects the Memphis Grizzlies next opponent the Grizzlies play in Minnesota against the Timberwolves tomorrow night and more than likely will not be seeing Carl Anthony Towns on the court this happened in the Timberwolves game last night against Against the Washington Wizards, Carl Anthony Towns goes down with a non-contact injury. According to Woj, there is early optimism that he may have avoided a substantial injury to his lower right leg, but he will undergo an MRI today. The official word was that he suffered a right calf strain. They were still getting waxed by the Wizards. Like, Kristaps Porzingis was putting in work against Carl Anthony Towns, against Rudy Gobert, uh, simply not working for the Timberwolves right now. Their defense is abysmal, but you hate to see it for Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, you hate to see if he cannot stay healthy and stay on the basketball court if you're Minnesota. And we will see what that means for the Grizzlies as they head on the road tomorrow to face Minnesota themselves. Could be a big night for Jaron Jackson Jr. and Steven Adams. <laughs> uh, even if Carl Anthony Towns was out yeah. there, it could be a big night. <laughs> for Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson Jr. in particular because of the style of play that those bigs play defensively. Rudy Gobert is a great free safety. Rudy Gobert, if you pull him away from the rim, not so much. You can shot fake. You can go by him. You can get your shot up. And if you're Jaron, who's pretty good at taking threes and pretty good at making them, if Rudy Gobert is on you, he's, he really can't guard you on the perimeter. Same thing with Cat. And on top of that, you can body cat. You can big boy cat in a way on the block to where you move him and you can get to your spot and get a comfortable looking jump hook like Steven Adams is known for doing. And then when the Grizzlies bring in the smaller bigs, the Santi Aldamas, the Brandon Clarks, those dudes are just going to go right by the, the uh, Rudy Gobert's and the Carl Anthony Towns. And this was my fear when the trade was made for Gobert. It's like, yo, how you can't guard bigs now. You, you can't now on, on the perimeter. If they come to the rim, sure, you, you'll be able to contest with Rudy Gobert and Cat is kind of long, but you can maybe protect the rim from guards. If you got a big like a Chris Stapps, like Jaron, right, like, like Santi, those dudes are going to feast against the Timberwolves because they just don't have the big men who are agile enough to keep them in front and to contest shots on the perimeter. Yeah, and we saw it when Minnesota – was here not only does it not work basketball scheme wise like the Timberwolves just don't have much of a soul anymore like everything that was building in that playoff series between the Timberwolves and the Grizzlies that gave so much oomph into a potential budding rivalry between two young teams two fun teams feels like it's been sucked out of the Timberwolves and a lot of it comes back to losing Patrick Beverly and that's not necessarily all on the court that's somebody who can be like guys we got to get our our S together in this And it's not just Beverly. Vanderbilt was, Vanderbilt was some of that also where, hey, we talked about it. We talked about it some last week with the Beverly pushing DeAndre Aiden situation. Some of it, some people need somebody there who they know is going yep. to fight with them. I, an example, Michael Jordan in, in the last dance, one of the more interesting things that came about about Scottie Pippen was Pippen was ready to, to fight, like literally fight for wins. He just needed somebody there who is going to stand up and fight with them. If nobody's there, Pippen's not going to lead that charge. Pippen isn't. Pippen is going to ride behind you as you fight. Carl Anthony Towns feels that way. Rudy Gobert feels that way, where they need somebody with that attitude, be it Beverly, be it Vanderbilt, be it somebody else 
with D'Angelo Russell feels that way, where they need somebody with that oomph, with that anger, with that you're not going to come in here and bully me and push me around, and then they'll elevate their physicality to match that. Those guys on their own aren't that. They, they just aren't. And so you lost so much of that attitude that made you good last year. And now we're, we're seeing them kind of revert back to their, their old ways. Yeah, you need someone who, I don't know if you saw over the weekend, Anthony Edwards was frustrated with the play call. And rather than do anything, he stood in the corner, hands on his hips, and could not look more disinterested or less disinterested in the situation. And, like, that's not okay. You need someone who lights into you in that situation. It's like, yo. <laughs> You're a professional. Act like it in this. So we will see what that means for the Timberwolves as the Grizzlies face them tomorrow. Uh, the big game last night, the Los Angeles Lakers had won five of their last six games, and then they proceeded to let go of a 17-point fourth quarter lead. They had had the longest streak in the NBA of winning games, went up by at least 17 points in the fourth quarter, but not so fast because the Indiana Pacers came in last night. Miles Turner and Buddy Heald, like, this could have been my home. It is not at the moment, and the Pacers get a game-winning shot out of the rookie from Gonzaga. Andrew Nemhard saw him help take down the Memphis Tigers in the tournament last year. Woo! Pew! Big game-winning three for Andrew Nemhard. A uh, big win for the Pacers, who at this point, they're young, they're fun, they're winning games. They look at least as of now like a lock for the Eastern Conference playoffs, although it is always way too early. That said, it becomes a situation of can the Lakers avoid not adding a couple players ASAP? Because there is a lot of thought that, especially given the way Anthony Davis, LeBron James have been playing together as of late, they're just a couple pieces away from being an actual contender. Are those couple of pieces Miles Turner, Buddy Heald. We know that is a trade that ended up not happening earlier this offseason when the thought was that they would get moved for Russell Westbrook along with draft capital from the Lakers. The Lakers did not want to give up. There are two and only two first-round picks that they have in their back pocket. But at this point, it's like, eh, should you? Could you? Maybe? I don't know. We'll see how that plays out as we continue to move forward. Russell Westbrook is coming off of the, the bench now. And he's performing at a high level. And before Russell was coming off the bench, he was still performing at a pretty good level. And I think that the focus is so much on, hey, you got to move Russ. You got to move Russ. That is the piece to move. That is the piece to move. Well, if, is that the piece to move if you have to come up off a first-round pick? The, the answer from the Lakers seems to be no. So if you're not going to move that piece, well, okay, you're going to move Anthony Davis? Because that's a piece that you can move and get something back as far as future draft capital. LeBron James, you want to move him? No, because he's King James. He's the face of the NBA and has been the face of the NBA for quite some time. But if you had the courage, you could probably get some draft capital back for that and still make your team a bit better. All three of those dudes are really, really good at basketball still. The pieces just don't fit, especially when you take into consideration they don't have enough shooters and they don't have enough perimeter defense evergreen statement Th that that's just what they <laughs> Never ends. that's what they are lacking so you got to move one of them and if you don't want to give up the draft pick to move russ well why not try and accumulate a pick by moving either anthony davis or god forbid lebron james yeah also in the nba last night the brooklyn nets beat the Orlando Magic behind one of the best performances of Kevin Durant's career. 45 points on 24 shots. Only made three threes, four free throws. It was a masterpiece, especially given that Ben Simmons got hurt in this game, had to leave. So Kevin Durant took it into his own hands to muscle the Nets into a win. There was even a moment early on where he was being guarded by Kevon Harris, where he legitimately laughed in his face, laughed in his face before ducking under him and going for a nice little runner off the backboard. Um, that's what Katie does. And Katie was asked after the game when he knew it was going to be a big night. Take a listen. When do you know that you're in the rhythm for a binge like that? Uh, when I wake up. <laughs> they. Cl I mean, he's, a laugh he's from the reporter. He's Sunday. Kevin Durant. <laughs> he knows. I wake up. He's good. I get out of bed. He's pretty damn good at this basketball thing. I kind of know that I'm good at this game. I think I have it in me all the time. I mean, yeah, he was like, that was an homage to Javon Carter, who had a similar answer earlier this season. But it's always funny. Uh, big night for Kevin Durant. Big night for Bo Bo. Bo Bo. 
is emerging. Do you know the joy that it is bringing my soul? I, I, I do because it's bringing my soul similar joy. I, th- I, I knew Bobo was going to come in if he could stay healthy and change the game. And look at this. Just a, a, a step, a, a hezzy behind the back. Three at seven, what, two, seven, three? Big Bobo. Bobo been out there balling, man. We, we, we salivate over Victor Wimbayama, and we should. But that dude is already in the league, and that dude's name is Bowl freaking Bowl. Bowl Bowl did it first. Double name. Bowl Bowl. I miss him in Denver. I really do. For what? They didn't play him. I know. They didn't use there him. There was that one beautiful, I think it was Summer League. Maybe it was a bubble game. I don't know. Were they rolled out there? Oh. Was it the bubble? It was oh. the bubble. And that was just, I love some Bowl Bowl. This season, Bowl Bowl averaging 13 and a half points. And and we'll this, I, I would say this is Bo Bo's like first, maybe second season of actual in game yes. experience utilizing that. So give him a bit more time. But you see flashes and and burst of this this magical thing that we haven't seen before. We're seeing it with Jaron. We're seeing it with Victor Wimbayama. But we don't see it often as somebody that is that size with those type of handles, able to fin- get to the rim able to take threes and able to, to block shots and be a solid defensive presence in NBA 2K 2021. Bobo, I'm like seven years in, so I'm in 2028 now. Bobo is unguardable in that damn video game because he can shoot the ball and get to the rim, and he's gotten stronger in the video game. So all Bobo, it's a similar thing to Jaren, right? Yeah. Where once you get that grown man body, it might not be weight necessarily. Think about Kevin Durant when he first came into the league to now. He's pretty much the same slender build, but he's stronger now. He's got that grown man strength. When Bo Bo gets that and can get to the rim and finish and can finish on the block with a post move and can hit the three, and it's looking like all of that is going to be coming here in the next two or three seasons. It's going to be great to watch the NBA basketball, to watch these seven-footers go out there doing things that Steph Curry can do. I look forward to the League of Trees, oh. where it's just straight trees, no shrubs. Who else Victor is there? Victor Webinyama, uh, Chet, Holmgren, Chet, Chet, right Victor, in there. You start Jaren, getting into that. Banchero. Alexi Pukashevsky. <laughs> Alexi Pukashevsky. Victor Webinyama. But, but no, you, you get some weight on those bodies. Woo. There is something very fun about watching very tall people with absurdly long arms doing what Bobo goes out there and does on the court. All right, one other thing that's exciting for today, it is... The end of group play in World Cup or the first round, however that works. Team USA plays Iran, win and advance. They have to win. And ZJ, this feels like one of the most politically charged sporting events that we have had in a minute. And it, there is a similarity to when USA and Iran played back in 1998, but this feels even more so. These two countries obviously have decades of strife. Uh, you can go back to the CIA back coup that happened in Iran in 1953. You can go to the Iranian hostage crisis that happened in 1979. And then now, along with the expanding nuclear programs and international attacks linked back to Tehran, and you have the Iran's nationwide protest that, in case you're unfamiliar with, uh, this goes back to the death of Maha Amini, a 22-year-old who was arrested earlier this year by the morality police for improperly wearing her hijab. She died in custody, and that inspired an uprising where we've had over 250 protesters have lost their lives. 18,000 have been arrested, and now you've seen that transfer over into the World Cup where Iranian soccer players have supported the protesters. They didn't sing the national anthem during the first game. That has reportedly led to Iran threatening family members of soccer players, saying, if anything happens, we're going to threaten your family members, obviously all reported at this point. But then USA Soccer, over the weekend, their social media team, not the team itself, but the social media team, in an attempt to show support, removed the Islamic Republic emblem from the country's flag in their social media posts previewing this game in the Group B schedule. You can see it there. This has caused Iran to demand that the USA be expelled from the World Cup, disqualified. USA coach apologized. This game is still going to happen. They have not been expelled from this. But it just feels like tensions are very, very high. Iran just needs a tie today, so you can expect to see them potentially play for that. But there's a lot going into this one, and I will be watching today's match. It is tough to go out there for that Iranian soccer team standing on the right side of this. 
right? Morality police. Get out of here. What are you talking about? You're going to kill somebody because they're not wearing their hijab the right way? Come on, man. You can't, you can't be doing that. And it's, it's one thing for the men to stand up with the, the women in solidarity for um, their fight to end their oppression and the oppressiveness uh, and maybe lessen the oppressiveness of the Iranian regime. But, y'all, they can't be focused right now. Not when that regime is threatening them and their families. And that's, that's not an idle threat. That yep. they, they back their stuff up. So if they're saying, hey, if you go out there and do X, Y, Z, we'll come find you and we'll come get you. You'll be looking for refuge, trying not to get back there, and you'll end up back there and they will kill you. Like that, that's, that's tough. And to be playing with that type of weight on their shoulders, I think is really, really uh, admirable. What they've been able to do going out there, getting the draw against England, getting the win against Wales, and all they need is a tie. They can sit back and pack that thing in and make the USA try and score. I don't know if the USA can. I haven't watched any of it, but I know men's soccer over here. They can't. They're not going to advance. Uh, but hats off to them for standing up for, for what is right and literally putting their lives on the line on the world's biggest stage. That's where the sports part of it just feels so small in comparison to the real-life stakes and the real-life situations at hand. That game today, believe it, kicks off at 3? One. One. I would have been real late to the party. <laughs> would have come in at the very end. You've got to probably figure out the times on the shows. I really struggle with times. I'm not going to lie. I struggle with the East Coast. We're in Central Time. My dad's in Mountain Time. My mom's in Pacific Time. I've got all the area codes. <laughs> <laughs> you got what in all the area codes? Parents, friends, family. <laughs> In Not the word you were going codes. with. All right, we're taking a quick break. When we come back, Will Coleman going to join us. We'll talk about the Memphis Tigers men's basketball team, everything that went down in Florida over the holiday weekend. He's on when we come back. Memphis, you ready for us? You better be. This is Friday Night SmackDown. We are the Warriors. Unbelievable. The champions. This is incredible. The highest flyers. Look at the height. And we're the oh, one who will make you jump out of your seat. Insanity on display. Make no mistake, you won't want to miss it. This is huge. Friday Night Smackdown. Tickets and ringside packages available Friday, September 23rd. Lang, you learn yeah. anything else? The one thing we haven't talked about gambling on is uh, the World Cup. Starts on Sunday. Oh, oh it does go. start. Brazil is the favorite at plus 350. The second favorite is Argentina at plus 500. The third is France at 7-1. to one. World Cup preview here on, uh, on that the That might Alex be the couple. best football this weekend. Get your sports betting picks and trends with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, CJ Hurt, and John Roser. The Odds Couple. Now live every Thursday at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media and YouTube. Are you ready? The toughest sport on dirt is back for an all-new 2023 season. Join the party and come watch the Cowboys of the PBR Pendleton Whiskey Velocity Tour ride the rankest bulls on the planet. The Bluff City Classic, February 18th at FedEx Forum. Tickets start at 15 bucks. Get yours at PBR.com or Ticketmaster.com. Get them while you can and find out what it means to be Cowboy. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. It is Tuesday. It is time to catch up with Will Coleman. Will, how was your holiday? Holiday was great. Holiday was good. Really, really, really chill. You know, I, I feel like the older I get, the more relaxed that I like to be. Mm -hmm. don't my really, favorite kind of holiday. Don't really, don't really like too much commotion nowadays. But so it was real chill, real cool. I, you know, I, I just real mellow. I like it. Yeah, that's the the perfect way. We were talking during the break. What's the cutoff for consuming leftovers? So last night, I had 
a turkey sandwich, and mac and cheese. Those were the only leftovers that I continued to consume. That's all Man. I have left. I think I have to cut myself off today. I can't do it again. I'm saying I'm going with either that, that Saturday or Sunday. Wow. Yeah, you got to can't just have that stuff up in the fridge, y'all. CJ, <laughs> apparently his mic isn't on. His mic is on? Oh. Kip in the chat said it wasn't on. Kip, let me do my job. My bad. I'm sorry for doubting you. You should be. I apologize deeply. A Saturday-Sunday cutoff. I feel like that's, like, the, the right answer, but then I don't want to waste any money, and so I want to have all the leftovers possible and save into the next week. But I'm, I'm tapping out. I'm officially yeah, that's, done. That's aggressive. Yeah, I know. One time, I I was telling you during the break, one time we went like seven days straight. It was in our our early local TV reporting days where we were making like (laughs) negative zero dollars. And so we tried to stretch it as long as possible. And I think we went a full week. And that was the year we learned that you cannot stretch Thanksgiving leftovers a full week or you will become violently ill. Y'all are outside of your mind. You eat it until it's gone. Whoa, that's how long whoa. You eat it. It, it's in there, and until it's gone, that's how, my wife is that way. I had to freeze some stuff. I, okay, I have freezing eat, is, if well, you listen, freeze, it's okay. Well, I, I have eaten Thanksgiving dinner Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That, that, okay. I, that's, how I, that's how I was raised to do okay, it. Okay, let me ask you this then. Okay, if you, let's say your food got an exp- expiration date, correct? If it got an expiration date, let's say your food go bad a certain amount of days. If you put it in the freezer, do the expiration days reset? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, Expi- and also, God. also, this is how I live my life. Y'all live your life how you live it. Expiration dates are mere suggestions. Just because it says it's bad, you doesn't know, I mean that it is bad. No, I feel the same way. That is true on things that are not meat, that are not dairy based. Those All expiration dates feel very real. Give me the milk. Give it a little sniff. Give it a little taste. Swirl yeah. around in your mouth. Yeah. If, it's, if it don't got I that bite to it, because you know it. that date on the milk is the sell by date. That's exactly. not when the milk goes come bad. Come on, come on, Will. Oh, That's not, not when the milk goes bad. Hey, hey, this is my other thing. Do not this is my drink other thing. inspired milk. The E on your gas tank. Just a suggestion, just to let you know. Man, hey, you, you got at least twenty five more miles. At least, Will. At, at least, least, at least twenty five more miles. Thank you for reminding me. I need an oil change. That is not a suggestion. Just a suge- when that another one that's just a suggestion. <laughs> you got another month before that matters. No, when the light comes on, you don't need to go. We do had it. some uh, a nice Dijon mustard that we found because I love my oh, turkey sandwiches gosh. with mustard. And Chris was like, "Do you think it's still good?" And I opened it. It is. It is not still good. It expired in twenty eighteen. That yeah, one's in the trash. Aggressive. So sometimes expiration dates are well, real. Well, two years. Come on now. Well, Jessica, that, was, that was four yeah, years. Four <laughs> years? <laughs> oh, yes. Four years. We, four only years. Mu- we only eat mustard. It was in the back of the fridge. I don't know how it, it got past the I'm not saying you drink fridge. the milk four years after the expiration date. I'm saying well, yeah, like a week die. or two. That sounds horrible. It's cheese at that point. Uh, it's Ugh. cottage cheese. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh, gross. I don't like that. I don't like that. Something we did like over the weekend, though, the Memphis Tigers. Went down and played in the ESPN Events Invitational yeah. and went two and one. Two and and one. there were some really solid takeaways. But oh, I yeah. want to go chronologically because we have to get out the, the bad first. Okay, so I want to go back to Thanksgiving because we were just talking about Thanksgiving food and leftovers and all that. That game against Seton Hall. And I need you to answer me a question because the Tigers were up four in the final minute. Mm. And then they were up two. And then Elijah McCadden had a chance to make two free throws. And it's Memphis, so... We'll say we're used to it. He misses them. And then Chandler Lawson gets the rebound. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, great. And then he throws it away. Why did he throw it away? Why did he give them the opportunity to make a buzzer beater you, win? You, 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 know, I, I, you know, when I saw that, mm-hmm. it was almost like a deja vu. And, and I'm going to tell you why. Because he hates when we talk about it. Uh, it was a certain incident, kind of the same incident with when I was playing with DJ Steffens. We was up playing UMass. And literally the night before we had that game, DJ Stephens is like, man, I hope I get on ESPN top 10 for a dunk. Because, you know, he was, he was a freshman. You know, this was his first time playing. Because DJ has come leaps and bounds in his career. And he'll tell you straight up, nobody wanted me when I first started. Nobody wanted me. And so he came. He started playing, making a name for himself, athletic. Same thing happened at UMass. DJ Stephens gets the ball. And instead of holding it, I don't, time's running out. I don't know if he tried to throw it to the other end of the court to kill the clock or something, but somebody swiped at it and got it and scored the basket, <laughs> and we lost. So in this same situation, 
I, I don't know if he just wasn't strong with the ball. I, you know, no one knows what's going yeah. through his head at the time. Maybe he didn't know where the clock was. I, 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 I mean, it could be so many different things, but you got to know what's going on. You got to be aware of the situation. You got to, I mean, all this stuff is going on while you're on the court. Time management, personnel, situation you're in, so many things. You, you just got to be aware of what's, of what's going on. Yeah, especially everything that they had. Like, the fact that it felt like they were going to win that game, considering oh, yeah. all the injuries, considering DeAndre Williams mm -hmm. fouling out, 17 turnovers. It was like, wow, they're still going to open this holiday tournament with a win. Right. And then they don't. It's a huge bummer. When Tyree Samuel released, did you think it was going in? Like, as, as a Memphis Tiger through and through, did it feel like it was destined to go in? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just because we, because I just feel, I, I believe in the basketball gods. Mm -hmm. The karmic basketball thing. universe, yeah. yeah. And I just, they were just kind of, all right, man, we gave you the opportunity to win. We will we're take it away. See, we, about to, we about to see what's happening. I'm going to get them the space. They do what they want with it. To go in and go in. If not, then y'all can have a win. But you you had a chance to secure the win, and it didn't happen. What lessons can be learned? Because that that's that's the thing with some of these tough losses. That's why you play in these invitationals in these tournaments during the holiday season to get you ready for the big tournament come March. What what right. lessons were learned in that particular game in that particular moment? Honestly, I think our defense was solid during the tournament. I just think the, the biggest thing, especially in a situation like that, we got the, the, the awareness of the game as a whole. We need to know what's happening at all times. And, you know, sometimes players are going to have to make executive decisions on the court because Penny's not going to be able to scream every moment of the game, hey, this, we, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. And one thing, and I know everybody, you know, a lot of people don't like that I'm on the Alex Lomax train, but I think he no, does this is your really, day. This is, this is <laughs> I think he's a, a great – Leader, yep. he may not be the most prolific scorer or or the most dominant scorer, but like people see him as a leader on that team, and people listen to Lomax. So I think it's you know chances or or spaces for Lomax in that situation and DeAndre Williams to be like, look, y'all, this is what we got going on because Penny can't be in the huddle and on the court at all times. So those two got to take the responsibility of leading these guys and showing these guys what's going on and what's about to happen. And that's the wild thing because coming into the season with the the ages of the guys on the roster, you would have thought like, oh, okay, they've been there, they've done that, they've had these types of experiences. So when they get into this situation, they'll be better able to handle it. Yeah. And, and they weren't in that game, but they have the experience now. And they've had the, they've got, they've gained the experience throughout the course of their collegiate careers to where now, okay, we've got this under our belt. And maybe it is, like you said, just simple as a low bringing everybody in like, hey, this is what we're going to do. If you get the ball, just hold on to it. I'm going to come get it. Right. Don't do anything reckless, anything crazy. Right. I, I just and, – and people listen – like I said, people listen to him. Yeah. So if he call that or if he, make, if, he, if he make that announcement, people will follow. And I think that's my favorite thing about this team. It's no egos. Everybody truly like each other. So if that leader or, you know, Aloy or DeAndre, you know, if he say what if they say what they need to say, I think the guys will listen. Yeah, I was going to give you the full platform for a justice for Alex Lomax Man, moment. Man, listen, because he finally broke the shooting slump too. He had he 13 did. points he against did. Nebraska, 12 points against Stanford, but then everything else that he does, he's playing hurt. You hear him after the game say so he avoids social media, doesn't mm -hmm. read the comments. His yeah. teammates stand up for him. Penny stands up for him, calls yeah. him the glue guy of this team. Like all I could think of as I was reading about everything of Alex Man. Lomax over the weekend, I was like, Will Coleman's going to be Listen, so happy on Tuesday. I, I am. I, I, you know, because people just be killing my – the stuff I hear – I ain't going to repeat it out because I don't want that bad They wanted him out of the starting guy. lineup. Fans yeah, were just man. Calling they wanted him out of the city. Let me tell you something. I don't know if Grind City Media as a whole, can we put on – like, can we – can we just put on a charitable event? Just a celebrity boxing match. Anybody that got something to say about Alo, come see me. What? Come see me, okay? We just, <laughs> gloves, we wear headgear, just set up the middle. We can put it in the form, outside the form. If you don't like Alo that much, that's how, that's how much I'm riding for my guy. Just set up, you know, just a little charitable. You know, we put this thing together. All proceeds go to your favorite charity. We just, if you don't like Alo, come, come see me. Come see me. Come see me. All proceeds go to the Memphis NIL Foundation. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. All proceeds go to let's get these let's get these players paid. Correct. But all proceeds go to the NIL fine. You don't like them that much? Let's come on. Let's go. The come opportunity on. is open. It's open for everyone. And uh, 
all Alex Lomax does is tune out the hate, which is a very difficult thing to do. Like, I, I cannot imagine yeah. knowing that all of that smack is out there and having to tunnel vision out and go out and continue to play the game and not let it affect you. And he does it. And that's all you can ask. And that defensive intensity, and that's what this team has. Like, the chemistry is great. This is far and away not Penny Hardaway's most talented roster he's ever had. Right. There is right. no first round pick suiting up for the Memphis Tigers this season. Right. But the chemistry is there, and they are developing a defensive intensity yeah. and a defensive identity, and Alex Lomax is a huge part of that. You had them hold two of their last four opponents to under 50 points, under 30% shooting in both VCU and Stanford. That's impressive. Right, right. I, and, and I get, and again, it's a difference between the criticism that he gets. You know, it's, it's a lot of, of big-time basketball players that have played a long time in Memphis and, and people that are from Memphis that grew up watching Alex Lomax. It's a difference between those guys giving criticism and rather than, you know, John Smith yeah. that's, you know, overweight and can't even get off the couch screaming, hey, low, suck. It's two totally different things. And I believe that constructive criticism from some people that have played high-level basketball versus that criticism that he gets from people that can't even shoot a basketball is two totally different things. And I just I, – it, it's different if, if guys, you know, we need you to play harder. We need this, that, and the third. But they be it's, – it's damn near death threats. I mean, golly, man, get off the man back. They about to get me. Slid. I'm gonna I'm I'm chill on it. I'm chill. I'm John, you already welcomed everyone in to fight you for I'm Alex just, Lomax. I mean, so good, I mean hey, you, you the chill slid, has left you the station. You slandered the good name of the great John Smith, Pocahontas's husband, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> uh, he, what? We're not gonna call him great either. Let's, was he not though? In the movie, he was. He's amazing. And, and, you're gonna, but, you're gonna well, take the in, Disney identification. In real, in real life, John Smith, Pocahontas was like ten. And John I, Smith was I, like grown, grown, grown. Okay. And then right. John Smith slaughtered through all of Pocahontas' family, and then Native Americans got pushed off their but ancestral homes. Don't worry, homes. Pocahontas ancestral too homes. showed them living yeah, happily but, yeah. in a new world. Pocahontas they, too. They, they you know good. what? They put it behind them. Can you paint with all the colors of the mountain? Right, man. They put it behind them. Paint with all the colors of the wind. Damn, like, what more can you? Grandmother Willow, like child grandmother. Was Willow. she the best? Arbor <laughs> character in a Arbor, Disney movie. Arbor character. <laughs> was she the best is there tree? Another I'm tree? trying to think of other trees in the Disney universe. There's a tree universe. in Fantasia. Oh, there is. Pretty That's cool all I tree. Can I think, think about. Mother Willow is one of the best supporting characters, one of the best mystical characters. Yeah. We talk all the time about yeah. mystical well, Moana, characters. Oh, that's a mountain. Moana's a mountain, but that would count. Oh, I would put volcano. that in a similar What if it's volcano. like, but it's a bunch of trees. Yeah, that, that make that volcano. But the, but the trees aren't the ones talking okay. and dispensing all right, all right, wisdom. Right. It's okay. the volcanoes that sing about love. There's flowers in Alice in Wonderland. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes. In my head, there yes, are. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's a drug-induced fever dream of Alice. There's a lot of stuff in Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> There's a lot of things in Disney movies that aren't what they appear in. John oh, yeah. Smith is one of them. Oh yeah. I had a real question for you, Will, and go now on. I forgot. <laughs> so go, go ahead. Whatever. Sorry, we're we were about. too concerned about, about the slander of Willow. Oh, who's the other option? Who's the other one? We know that they've got one guy, but if defenses start keying in, taking Which we away saw at Kendrick, the end of the Stanford game. who's the other one? Man, I'm seeing. Who would you I'm, like the other I'm, one to be? I'm seeing spurts of like <laughs> McCaden when he. I think he. I never McCaden McCad McCaden McCaden. I like him. Um, I like him. I, I think if he can get consistent, we can have him as an option. Um, I also like uh, Keontae. What was your response to that Keontae Kennedy dunk? I mean, I was, I, you know, I was excited. You know, I just, I, I almost was like, where'd this come from? You know, but it was a great, it was a great out of bounds play. Yeah. Penny drew up something, you know, very spectacular. I mean, just. I mean, come on. The guy didn't. The guy didn't oh, show. That's but you. Horrible. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and it's a great. It's a great dunk, you know. And it's and just it's an energizer too. Oh like yeah. You're down oh yeah. At that point. Oh yeah. And I and I was excited to see that. And you know, basketball is a game of runs and it's momentum. I was I was glad to see this before. A million. Before. Not enough. The limit does not I mean, exist. you got to have every angle on that. That's. I mean. Meanwhile, first off, the Las Vegas Invitational right? for the women had. A cell phone camera, but you have eight angles of the Keontae Kennedy dunk I'm, in Florida. I mean, it was, it was, it was, I'm glad we was able to have that momentum shifting yeah. moment before that Ingram kid got off. Because, I mean, word on the street is Ingram is a baller. 
and he has the ability to take over games and show up. Now, he didn't when he played us, which was great, but I think we stayed solid and, and, and we played amazing basketball. Now, if I'm playing devil's advocate, if, if, if they hitting all them threes they was putting up, we lose by 20. Because them boys was jacking that joint. Like, yeah. you had one guy went like 0 for 7, another guy went like 0 for 9. I mean, it was some crazy numbers, but we stayed solid and we played great. And you know Memphis isn't going to match that no, no. three-point mm -mm. shooting at this point. Mm -mm. Tree of Life. Shout out to Reddick in the chat pointing Ooh, out yes. the Tree of Life. That is a great, it's not a character, but is a great symbolic tree. The Tree of Life, Will, you're looking confused. That's okay. from Lion King. That's yeah, yeah, Lion King. Okay, Lion King. I was trying, I was trying to put which movie, yeah. which, okay, Lion, yeah, yeah. You could Lion also, King. like, I guess... Pride Rock doesn't speak, but Pride Rock is a metaphorical character in okay. the Lion King. All right. It represents. Too far left? No, I'm, I'm, I'm down with it. Pride Rock. So we got Pride Rock. We got Mother Willow. We got Tree of Life. We've got the volcanoes in Moana. We have the entire ocean in The Little Mermaid. But the ocean doesn't do anything. Yeah, the, ocean the ocean does stuff in Moana, so we'll put the ocean from Moana in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mermaid was just... The ocean was just there. That's like yeah. saying, well, we got oxygen all around us in, in Aladdin. Like, no, that there, there's I mean, technically, things. that's I what mean, it was in Mermaid. Oxygen. You yeah. need the water breathe. Yeah. So, no. So, okay. no, we're not counting If that. you think of any more, please let me know. I'm, I'm my, on my it. My wheels are I am, are I really am thinking spinning. about it as we're supposed to be talking about Tigers basketball. Well, and trying to find other options other than Kendrick Davis. But it's so helpful that you have Kendrick Davis. And that yes. is like the one crystal clear thing of this team right now. And yes. he was the AAC player of the week following a week where he averaged 19 points, five assists, two steals in three games for Memphis. Is he living up to all your expectations? Is it more than what you thought he would bring to this Tigers team, considering what he did at SMU last year? No, no. I, I tweeted. I said, this is the same Kendrick Davis that lit us up last year. <laughs> it's true. So I, I hope he's here to stay. Um, and, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously you think about things like, you know, maintenance, management. Will he hit a wall? Does he get tired? Does he? Because he's, I mean, he's, I think he feels it now. Like, I got to score. Because if not, we in trouble. And I, I, he, may, he may feel that. He may yeah, not. He should. But <laughs> <laughs> he may feel it's that pressure truth. now. Because if he, it's getting to the point now, if he's not averaging 15 or 20 points, we in trouble. Yes. Because, I mean, you don't have anybody else on the floor that's coming in like, yeah, I'm about to give y'all a smooth 20 tonight. We just don't have that right now. And so these guys better find it quick. Because yeah. come, come conference play, you know, that's... That, Houston that, that, is now the number one team in the country. Speaking of Houston, I, just, I was listening to it on the way. I, I'm kind of jealous, okay? I couldn't decide if it was good or not. Okay. Paul Wall, Bum B, I love them. Great okay. artists. They just made, like, some kind of anthem for Houston. And it's kind of dope. And I'm kind of really? like, yeah. Really? Okay. It's called... Uh, I forget what it's called. But I listened to it, like, four or five times on the way down here today, trying to decide if I liked it or not. And the, the final thought is I really like it. I'm just butthurt that Memphis doesn't have anything like that. They can get it, though. I was going to say, considering I think you can. all of the... Yeah, I mean, you got, you, what they, you got Glorilla, you got 3-6, you got, I mean, Al Capone still in there. You got Duke Gotti. Deuce, you got Gotti. You got money bag. money bag. I mean, you got NLE Chavo. NLE. I mean, we could make a dope Memphis Tiger anthem. Now, don't know who paid for it because, you know, Paul Wall, Bum B, they legends. Maybe they made it out of the kindness of their heart. But I'm pretty sure somebody broke them off. Somebody paid for it. Somebody paid somebody for paid it. For but it was worth it. When you get a chance, when you get a chance, go listen to it. Go listen to it. Just they, listen to it. And they always do that. Though, not always, but they're Bun B and Paul Wall right. specifically in the Houston community, they're always around those various sports oh, programs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so they're, Memphis rappers are always around Tigers right. basketball in particular. And, and now they're coming around Grizzlies basketball more and more. Also, you're right. Get, get these rappers together and do a, do a Memphis collab. Man, they need to just do one big collab. I think people would love it. I think people would. Not everybody, you know. Do, does does everybody get a 16? Are we doing, hey, we, we're going to divide this up. Everybody get an 8. Like, we're we not going to let it because we're going to try and keep it Can it, it be basketball in general or does it have to be specific for the no, Tigers? It has can it be, be a Tigers specific Grizzlies? Basketball. Be specific basketball. No, but can it be Tigers and Grizzlies together or does it have to just be? Well, I, no. so that one is just simply for Houston, the Cougars. I, I, would, I would make it specifically for the Tigers 
and then do a remix that is specifically for, for the, the Grizzlies. Grizzlies. I like, see, I like that idea. I like that. So I think, I think we need something like that. I think we're right now culturally, just to, to play devil's advocate like you, you'd probably get one for the Grizzlies and then get a remix for the Tigers. Don't you think? Hey, yeah, no. Now. No? But, yeah, no. now. Because it was now? a point in time. It was a point in time Absolutely. where people was like, I got tickets to the Grizz game. No, I'm straight on it. How about them Tigers tickets, though? <laughs> you know? But yeah. now it's like, I got tickets to the Tigers. Uh, how about them Grizzlies, though? You know what I'm saying? It's I very matchup dependent yeah, for yeah, the Tigers at the yeah. moment, whereas the Grizzlies, it's like any given night oh, yeah, you want to oh, yeah. be in the building. The Tigers do have a huge game before we see you the next time. They play North Alabama, which is not the huge game, but that's on Wednesday at FedEx Forum. And then they play Ole Miss, and Ole Miss is 6-1 and one to start the year. A good team, a team that, according to computers, Memphis can beat Ken Palm, which also moved Memphis up from 29th to 27th after We're this weekend to play. We are talking Ken Palm. Already, baby. We are talking Bartorman. Already. We are talking computers and quads and everything. It's not December. November 29th. It's, it's time. Yeah, man. We, we, it's, it's to, you know, we had the quad talk not too long ago. Quads. Now we, no. Quads and <laughs> no. Ken Palm. That's a quads story. and Ken Palm. Uh, Does that make you excited, makes, CJ? That makes me yeah. so happy. <laughs> I love quad talk in November. Let's go, Ken Palm. <laughs> what did Ken Palm have to say? Ken Palm has the Tigers at 27. 27. Let's go. Let's see what that Coming off this early. weekend. Bart Bartorvik.com has them at 21st, ahead of teams like UNC That's and Auburn. Team. UNC just got upset. That was crazy. Yeah. It did. Any other big takeaways? It was... A lot of college basketball action. Any teams that have stood out to you so far? Man, I, you know, I, I got to be kind of careful how, how I tweet things. Okay. I said something about Purdue, and of course, some heckler gave me some crap because I spelled it wrong. Ooh, you're cool. But, like, <laughs> one thing about Purdue, and I, this, is exactly, this is exactly how I said on Twitter, Purdue keep some big ass white boys on their team. They do. I don't know where they get them from. I don't know where they grow them. I don't understand it. But they just massive. And that just can year after year you think I'd be used to it, but it just it just seemed like every year they find somebody bigger. And I it just amazes me. So I'm really I'm really excited to see Purdue as they pro, pro, you know progress. Um they're six and zero. Oh, yeah, fifth in the latest AP. Mm -hmm. I like Purdue. Um, I'm 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 curious to see where Iowa takes this UNC win, because sometimes stuff like that happens and they get a big upset a and then they just tank. Yeah. You know, so I'm excited to see where they go. Um, but again, I know we hear from my Tigers. I'm excited to see where they take this tournament because I was, I was, I, I I thought I was being too far off and I wanted them to go three and zero, oh, but it was very possible. Yeah. It was very a buzzer possible. Buzzer beater away. Yeah, it was very possible. So I'm excited to see where they take the energy and what they learn from this tournament going into North Alabama. Because anybody can get got on any given day. So I don't care who we playing. If North Alabama come in here, hit shots and do what they supposed to, we can take an L. I don't care who it is. They need to play like it's their last game, my Tigers do, and, and, and play like we don't look over any opponent because we have seen, we, we've gotten smacked. Yeah, it, it's looked like Penny Hardaway has had fun coaching this team, and oh, yeah. that fun goes away real fast if you oh, lose yeah. to a team like North Alabama. So oh, a couple sure. big ones ahead, and of course, an always rivalry with the Rebels coming into FedEx Forum on Saturday. Will, we will catch up with you next week. Thanks for joining us. We'll take a quick break here. When we come back, we are talking TV Tuesdays. We're going to reflect on our favorite Christmas episodes of television of all time. We'll be right back here on Rising Grind. Socios is the first of its kind in fan influence and rewards. Through the Socios app, you can influence the team you love, connect with other fans, trade, and compete for rewards. Socios.com is the official crypto wallet and trading exchange for some of the biggest sports teams and franchises in the world, like FC Barcelona, Juventus, the UFC, and now they are an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. Download the Socios app wherever you download your apps, create an account, participate, and and win. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to reinvent the steel industry, much like the Grizzlies are reinventing basketball. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com. 
That's www.bigriversteel.com. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Indulge in the all-new Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger with creamy steak seasoned butter and crispy bacon. Stacked on a 100% pure beef patty with two slices of melty American cheese and grilled onions. Layered between a warm bakery bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Breathing easy requires good lung health. However, there are signs your lungs may not be healthy. A persistent cough may be a warning sign of lung disease, such as COPD, asthma, post-COVID lungs, or cancer. Other symptoms to look out for include feeling short of breath, wheezing, losing weight, coughing up blood, or chest pain. Don't ignore or dismiss these symptoms. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialists at 901-276-2662 to schedule your lung health screening. It's a matter of life and breath. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You can also dunk them into nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Grizzlies fans, super exciting news from Cintron Sparkling Energy Drink, the official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Cintron has combined all three of their delicious flavors into a limited edition six-pack sampler box. Try Cintron's great-tasting cranberry classic and sugar-free all-in-one pack. Cintron Sparkling Energy Drinks deliver long-lasting energy, are gluten-free, and have no preservatives, and have less calories and sugars than other energy drinks. Hurry and pre-order your Cintron six-pack sampler box today at CintronWorld.com slash Grizzlies. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. It is Tuesday, so that means Pop of the Morning TV Tuesday edition. And instead of talking about a movie that I watched on TV last night, Spirited, Will Ferrell, Ryan Reynolds, go watch it. We'll save it for Thursday. Isn't that right, CJ? First up, can you tell me before we get into our best Christmas television shows of all time, what Kaleidoscope is? No, I can't. I don't, oh, okay. I don't fully understand it at all. But here's what I, I, I've gleaned. They're dropping this season of this new show on Netflix. It's supposed to be some type of mystery sort of thing. And you can watch it in any order that you want. So you can start, let's say it's 10 episodes. You can start at episode 7, go to episode 3, go to episode 4, go to 1, go to 5, go to 10, go to 6. And depending on how you watch the show, depending on how you do the episodes, it affects your viewing experience. And it's a different story that is told depending on how you watch the show. You can watch it start to finish if you would like. You can watch it backwards, finish to start. You can hop around like I just said. It is a really, really weird concept, and I can't wait to watch this. I don't usually do these types of shows, um, but if you're telling me, depending on how I watch it, it's going to affect my my understanding of the story, y'all, I'm all the way in here for a almost choose-your-own-adventure type of situation, but it's, it's a random choose-your-own-adventure. It's on... Netflix, it's on the Netflix. Netflix it's on and the it Netflix. comes out in January. Yes. And it's Giancarlo Esposito, who I yeah. will watch in anything. And this feels like a chaotic thing that he could guide through. I don't know how I feel about this as a whole. It stresses me out. As someone who likes things chronological and in order, a TV series where you can just jump around. And not like sitcom style where you can just jump around because there's no actual meaning to storyline and plot. Like You just have characters who exist in a space and can have different conversations and different dramas that they navigate through this feels so interesting and weird yeah i don't know why it which episode what's what's me. what's the order you're going oh it doesn't excite you i think i'm gonna start that what are you gonna start? i'm gonna start with three i'm gonna That's start my at favorite seven number. i'm gonna start at seven and then or do you start with like the penultimate episode so the second to last episode however many episodes there are is that the like, pen, it can't that's be a not penultimate the penultimate that's just, the start of the the show 
What was that show that we watched for a hot second on Netflix where it was like choose your own adventure? Remember when it was it was improv, but there was a scene oh, set and they oh, did a lot uh, of different comedians came on it and just improv their way through. Was it comedians? You're talking about the Marshawn Lynch show? Mm -hmm. It wasn't just comedians. Will Arnett. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't remember the and name. It was like of a it. cop drama. In yeah, it was a cop drama. And they had to, to, to figure it out. Did, did we pick our adventure in that episode? What what was it, Robbie? Murderville. Murderville. And Murderville. You didn't choose your adventure, no. but I didn't feel like they went in order, so I watched the ones with the celebrities that I was interested in, yeah. and then never returned to it and watched the other ones. This will be interesting. This comes out January first on Netflix. I will. I need season two of Murderville also. Thank out. you for reminding I didn't me. Know. That. It out. The first episode was like a novelty, and I was like, oh, it's Marshawn Lynch. This is great. And then I can't even remember who else was on it. I forgot Marshawn was on it. Like I, I don't, I'm not remembering Murder the, Bell. I'm not remembering the, the you show are going in that to get way. Season two, according I, to I'm, this. Conan, I remember, Conan's Conan episode was, in was good. Was was Kumail was in it? Was oh, Aubrey yeah. Plaza on it? If not, Annie she Murphy. should be. I have no clue. Who Annie Murphy She's is. She's on Shit's Creek. Okay. A little bit of Lexus. Okay. Sharon Stone. Yeah, oh, I remember the Sharon Stone episode. Ken Jong did an episode. Yeah. Maya Rudolph, Jason Bateman. There were a lot. Good show. It was. It was good, okay Jessica. Show. Whatever. All right. Well, Jessica's there were some hater. great shows. So this morning, we didn't quite know what we were going to talk about on TV Tuesday, and CJ came up with the wonderful idea of talking about our favorite Christmas episodes of television ever. This is not a draft because we're going to do a draft tomorrow of the what best Christmas movies of all time. It should get spicy. It should get heated. Best Christmas movies. That is our draft tomorrow. You do not want to miss it. Also, it's a Wake Up Rob Day, which we haven't had in forever on tomorrow's show. No, they're in Minnesota, and I'm so excited to call Rob. And if he doesn't answer, he owes us one. He didn't answer. The last time I think we attempted to call him on the road was the Grizzlies game in New Orleans, which was Jaron Jackson Jr.'s debut, and he had gone to Gatorville the night before in the swamp. He didn't answer us twice because they wouldn't let us through he in San Antonio. D &D. He put it on D and D in New Orleans, and they wouldn't let us through in San Antonio, right? So we hadn't talked to him twice. <laughs> well, hopefully, we get to catch up with our dear friend Rob Fisher tomorrow. But what's your favorite episode of Christmas television of all time? Uh, too many to name, but I'll start with the Blinkany um, from Bob's Burgers, where <laughs> Linda Belcher. Um, is pitting up the decorations and decides she's going to throw a holiday away at the, the restaurant, throw a little holiday party at the restaurant, and looks up, and the Christmas tree is gone. And the reason the Christmas tree is so important to her is because it has all the homemade ornaments that the kids have made throughout the course of their, their time in school. So she, Bob, and the children go on a huge adventure across the city trying to find the Christmas tree and trying to find the ornaments and the kids think that the monster, the, the blinking comes through and he, he took the, the ornaments and it, it crescendos at this rave. So you've got Bob Belcher, you got Linda Belcher, you got Gene, you got Louise, you got uh, Tina all in the middle of a rave, a, a Christmas rave at that. And they look up and they see their, their ornaments are up there and it's like, ah, well now our ornaments are making other people happy so we don't need it anymore. Happy Christmas, everybody. I love that episode. I've never, I've watched one episode of Bob's Burgers in my life. Which episode? I don't even know. I, when I was at USC, I was in a TV class in my small period of time where I was going to be a screenwriter. And the creators of Bob's Burgers came in for one of our classes and showed an episode of Bob's Burgers. And I always thought it was so funny. And then I just never went back to it. But maybe I'll go watch The Blinkening. Yeah. Do I need to watch other Bob's Burgers to no. enjoy The Blinkening? Well, listen, you... you <laughs> You might need to watch some episodes to get a better feel for the, the characters. characters. Okay. But no, the characters are going to be ridiculous the whole time. So there's this scene <laughs> right here, here where <laughs> they're, they're questioning people about where the ornaments are. And this is, a, as you can see, a nude painting class. Uh -huh. And so they're asking this guy who was at the restaurant, like, hey, did you see who took the ornaments? Did you see who took the tree? And so it's a, it's a lot of good stuff. <laughs> I love this episode. Well. Speaking of people dressed up as Santa Claus, I'll go with Will and Grace, which has a myriad of Christmas options. But Karen Walker as BDSM Santa Claus um, is everything. And I used to just quote 
this episode regularly and I would just yell, Grace, it's Christmas for goodness sake. Think about baby Jesus. And I just said that. That was like one of those things that just lived rent free in my mind. Um, but I love all of the Will and Grace Christmas episodes. I love everything with Karen Walker. And yeah, that's my memory of sitcom-ness. Another one that really stood out, because then my brain started working its way through. Do you remember the Boy Meets World episode of A Very Topanga Christmas? When Corey and Topanga celebrate their first Christmas together and she tries to import all of her Christmas traditions on his family and he's like, I just want my aluminum tree! And she doesn't want an aluminum tree and then Mr. Feeney comes as the ghost of Christmas future and shows him what his life would be like. He had brought a promise ring for Topanga and all of a sudden he's like, I don't like her Christmas traditions. I'm worried about our relationship moving forward. And Mr. Feeney shows him that like she would have gone on to live a very happy life and he would have gone on to be like a very sad, balding, dad bod kind of dude without kids, which just seemed like a sad place to be back in 90s television and watching that play out. And then they come together and they learn the lessons of sharing Christmas traditions. Corey Matthews, uh, one of the Corey Matthews is on the long list of TV characters who did not deserve their TV spouses. No, almost fumbled the bag yeah. so, so many, many times. times. So many times. And I way have, out kicked I his coverage. Have, I would have never fumbled Topanga Lawrence. No. I would have never. Topanga, if you're out there, holla at your boy. I, I, I love you in ways that Corey could The character, well, well, did they not get divorced? Well, no. Isn't she still with that guy they did Girl and they found, the, World. they found the shrimp tails in their cereal? Don't you remember that weird story? Oh, I'm not story? talking about the, the oh, actual I'm person. I'm not talking about, what's her name? Danielle Fisher. Danielle Fisher. Oh, Lord. Uh, I'm <laughs> talking about Topanka, the character. I'm sure Miss Fisher or Mrs. Fisher is, is very, very happy with her, her current husband. But Topanka, if you're out there in TV universe, bring me through. I'll be your boy. We can meet the world. <laughs> I had a friend who, when we were little and like would play dolls and beanie babies, she got like dibs on Topanga every time. Like her doll could be named Topanga, and it always made me so upset. I was an only child, so I was like, "How do I, how do I argue my way into having Topanga?" At some point, she just got it unanimously. Still upset about Why it. Why would you want to name your doll Topanga anyway? Because Topanga was like so cool. Look at your reaction to Topanga all these years later. I, I didn't. That's not be because Topanga. Topanga was cool. Oh, I'm, I was saying Ooh. that in a way of. You remember the Young Maxim Jesse. cover? I sure do. Oh my God. God, we talk so much about like Disney star, like like Miley Cyrus got so much hell. Selena Gomez gets, you know, starts to evolve out of Disney fight. Topanga was the first to go there. <laughs> she, was she the first? She wasn't the first. Mm, Cause she does this. I'm I'm pretty sure the Maxim cover is which like years later? late 2000s. Late 2000s? I, would, I always I put it in it, like early 2000s. No, I think the Maxim cover is like 2011, 2012. Oh. Mm. Let me do- let me double check that. She killed it. Um, what's it? Wait. Okay. While you check that, I'll give my next one. The Ted Lasso Christmas episode that came out in the middle of July, which was called Carol of the Bells, and was just a beautiful ode to Love Actually, made me a very happy person. So that's on the list. CJ, have you ever seen Love Actually? I had yeah. this. You have. Yeah. Someone told me Love Actually is a cultural thing. <laughs> it is. Okay. That's what I mean. I it's a cultural it. and it's a. Ch- a, a rom-com, so it's kind of a woman thing yes. as well. So if, if the only reason I saw it is because my wife wanted to watch it. She's a big sap for those types of Christmas movies. Did she also movies. make you watch The Holiday? What, what happens in The Holiday? Uh, Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz switch places. Like one's oh. in L.A. Oh, yeah, and yeah, one's yeah. in I know. Ireland, I, I watched, Scotland, I watched that myself. And the one that's from Ireland ends up with Jack Black. And yes. the one that's from America gets that hunk yeah. of a man, whatever his name is. I love is. that movie so much. Yes, I, I watched that on my own. Okay. Wow. Impressive. I, I haven't watched Love Actually in a long time. And Chris has never seen Love Actually. So I think I'm going to force him to do Love Actually. When did the Topanga Maxim cover come out? 2016. 2016? 2016. Yeah, Dang. so that that I, okay, yeah, fine. so she didn't do it first. That was inaccurate. She, that, that was she. She lived a whole life after Boy Meets World, and then did that. Which, oh, good grief! Am I glad she did it? Yeah, so glad. Okay, what's your next episode? Uh, let's go to the office. Speaking of sitcoms, speaking of Christmas episodes, sitcoms do Christmas episodes real well. Family Matters does it well. Um, what's what's another Full House does it well. The Office does it. So Super duper good. All of their Christmas episodes are great. And you got to go with the uh, the Sexy Santa Claus episode where Mike is trying to get uh, Holly to, to be his girlfriend. But Holly has a boyfriend, which is hilarious. Mike comes in dressed up as Santa Claus. Kevin comes 
to sit on his lap. Mike is mad because Phyllis is Santa Claus. There's the Christmas episode. I think there's the sexy Christmas episode where it is Moroccan themed for some reason, which aggravates Stanley. I love all of the Office Christmas episodes. They're all good. Yeah, Office killed it. Uh, 30 Rock always did good. Oh, they 30 Rock. Luda Christmas. About the cri- it's Luda Christmas. It's Luda Christmas. I love when they bring Elaine Stritch on. Any episode with her as Alec Baldwin's mom always uh, brought me sincere joy. Uh, those were good. But my favorite, Chris, one of my favorite Christmas episodes of like serious television, because sitcoms do it well. They have it every single year. You're always going to have a Christmas episode. Long form dramas don't have to have Christmas episodes, but Mad Men had a handful of them. And the Christmas party in Christmas comes but once a year when they don't have the money to throw a Christmas party, but they have a big new client coming back. And so they throw it anyway. And Joan wears the red dress. And this is just such an iconic scene and moment from Mad Men history. And Don Draper sleeps with his secretary after a Christmas party, which just feels so completely and totally Don Draper, and then just gives her like a hundred bucks as a Christmas bonus. She comes to his office like all giddy-eyed and excited the next day, and he's like, here's your Christmas bonus. One of the worst characters, but worst best characters on television, John Hamm as Don Draper. Any other ones for you, CJ? Is that it? Um... I think Parks and Rec does a good Christmas episode. I'm trying Again, to think the back. Sitcoms. They kill it. I'm trying to think back to some Modern really good. Family did Modern some good Family's Christmas episode. But Modern, Blackish did a good Christmas Blackish, episode. Modern Family, their holiday that always made me, oh, I got to sit down and watch this, was Halloween. That I enjoyed yes. watching that family run around during Halloween. Claire trying to scare everybody and Phil, of course, being scared. Uh, but that, yes, they've they've had. I'm trying to think of. I think it was Christmas where everybody lied about where they were so that they didn't have to do dinner together and they just end up doing dinner together anyways because of a series of hilarious events. Um, Yeah, those are my episodes. Are we counting? Because it's TV, right? The Mm -hmm. the TV specials, so your Rudolphs, your Frosties, your Charlie Browns. It's feel different. Do they? But they're not movies, though. Yeah. But they but aren't they're a, specials. They're specials. Okay, so TV specials <laughs> are are different. Speaking of which, my wife went out and bought a Charlie Brown Christmas or it's Christmas Charlie Brown because it's not going to be shown on CBS this year. Why? It's on Apple TV. Oh, well, all the more reason to get Apple TV so you can watch Spirited and Charlie Brown Christmas. I was. Did you ever watch the OC? No. They had a great Christmas episode, the Christmaca. The Christmas Hanukkah episode, great episode of television as well. So many options on Rug- that. One. Now you bring it up. Rugrats has a good episode. Oh, how did I? Rugrats. Forget? Rugrats has a good. They, how they did do. I forget the thing that made me run around as a child screaming, "Oh, the horse, the horse!" <laughs> <laughs> because I thought it was Menorah. Oh, that's uh, Lang and Kelsey over there. So early in the morning. All right, we uh, have to hustle up and get on out of here. But first, oh, first we have to double tap. How can I just skip? I'm all the got Rug- distracted the by Rug- people Rug- coming Christmas through. Christmas episode is everything in my soul, and I forgot all about and, it. And it's not a Christmas; it's a Hanukkah episode. It's a Hanukkah episode. So it was the, the, honestly probably my first yeah. introduction to Hanukkah as a child. Um, all right, this dude won seventy-five thousand dollars last night by making a big old shot. Check this out at Crypto.com Arena. I hope they pay him in cash and not in cryptocurrency because that's going down the tube. But this man right here from Half Court, check him out. There's a lot of people there, but the heave and the bank for money in the bank. This is my dream. I want to win seventy-five thousand dollars. Aim for the top of the backboard. Just aim. Aim for the top of the backboard and and try and put a little spin on it so that it hits that backboard and falls down, not bounces off of it and bounces back to you. Lakers went crazy. Uh, they I love to see people love to see people get money, especially when you already got money. That's great. Right, like one of those people could like probably part with seventy five thousand yeah. dollars very casually as a Christmas gift and say here, even if you missed. But instead, it's like you worked for your money. <laughs> Here's your seventy five k. All right, let's save the other one for. Tomorrow, it was a fun moment from The Rock, but we'll put it in Things We Missed because it's a Wednesday. We'll have Oops, We Missed It again. We will have Wake Up Rob Fisher as the Grizzlies are on the road in Minnesota to face the Timberwolves. We will have D'Angelo Williams, our first time with him since he surprised us live and in studio. We'll catch up with him on how his holiday was, and we'll have all that and more. It'll be a Grizzlies game day. It'll be a good time. Stay weather aware today if you are in Memphis. Moderate chance at severe weather here in the city. Lots of rain. Uh, some wind so be careful out there and we will see you here tomorrow morning have a good one 
thank you for watching Rise and Grind. Tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock to hear more from Jessica right here on Grind City Media.